Okay, so looking at this last page here, you're a business owner and one day you decide to model out your sales revenue as a function of time. So what, think what that would say, like, so there's time and revenue. After loading your data into Excel, you discover that your first derivative of your sales function is positive. Okay, so what would that mean? If you have a positive first derivative, I want you to think deeply about what does that mean about your graph? Well, as we learned in the section, that would mean your graph is increasing, right? Your graph is going up. So therefore, your f you discover that your first derivative of your sales is positive, and the second derivative is negative. Okay, so if the second derivative is negative, that means you are concave down. So if you are looking at something like this, what would that mean, right? Your, your slope at whatever point is positive but it's concave down. So think about what that says to you about your sales and what what kind of what that means to you as a business person what you want to do with that. So think deeply about this and kind of and gather your thoughts and there's a homework question that's going to help you kind of analyze how you would how you would read this. So just think about remember when we this section what we talked about is if a first derivative or a velocity is positive that means your graph's going up. If you're so if your first derivative is positive, you're going up, right? Positive means your graph's going up. If it is negative, then that means your graph is going down because your tangent line has a negative slope, right? And then again, for concavity, if you are of a positive concavity or positive second derivative, it means you're concave up. And if you have a negative, it's a little cyclops, that's kind of funny. And if you're a negative, it means you're a concave down. Okay, so now let's build into here. What is the first derivative number line test? Well, we were doing these throughout the entire, entire lesson here. So if you did, your, you made your derivative just like we did. And previously you found your zeros. So let's just pretend I got a four and a seven were my zeros. And then I saw something like this, negative, positive, negative. The first derivative number line test is just interpreting your answers. Well, what does this mean? My graph is going down, and now it is going up. And if I pass through zero in between, what does that tell me about my graph? Ah, it tells me I have a minimum. Now, here, the positive slope means my graph is going up, and now it means I'm going down, and I went through a zero in between. So what does that mean about this graph? Well, that means I have a maximum. So this is how you use another way of using the number line test, the first derivative number line, is to tell if your graph has mins or maxes. Now, of course, you could have something that's neither of the above. Let's just pretend same numbers, just made these up out of thin air, and it had something like this. Well, what would it mean if my graph was positive? Well, it means my graph's going up, right? And then we're still positive. So maybe we did something like this. We were going up, we went to zero, and now we're still going up, right? So what does that mean? We have nothing, not muffing, M would be funny, nothing, right? right? There's nothing there. But then again, our graph was still going up and now it's going down. So therefore, horizontal tangent line, which means this would be a max. So you have to test each um, critical number. You have to test each zero and see what's going on to the left, what's going on to the right, and verify what your first derivative number line test tells you. Now, you can also have a second derivative value test, because remember, a second derivative means your graph is either concave up or concave down. So if I told you something like this, these are kinds of problems I like to give sometimes, f of, uh, f prime of 2 equals 0, and f double prime of 2 equals 4. Well, what does that mean? All right, first of all, if the derivative is equal to 0, that means I have a critical number, right? What we were looking at here, so I need to test it. But I didn't give you the information to draw a number line, so you can't. So you say, okay, I know there might be a min or might be a max. How do I tell? Right, so this might be a min or a max or nothing. Could be either. Uh, could be that too. But if I know it might be a min or a max, how do I tell? Well, what does the second derivative tell us? At that x value of 2. Same x values, right? At 2, I know my graph is the derivative is 4. Well, I don't really care what the number is. All I need to know is that it's concave up. And so what does it look like if my graph is concave up? Ah, so if at 2 my graph is concave up and I know the derivative is 0, then I know it is a minimum. So what we're going to say is the second derivative value test can be used where you don't want to draw the whole number line. Or you're going to verify. It, gives you the, it should give you the same answers, right? So you're going to verify um, your what you found for your derivative. So therefore, if my derivative is 0, 
I can look at the value at the second derivative. If it's concave up, I know it is a min. Or if it was concave down, let's say, well then what would that mean my graph would look like? Well, I still have a 0 at 2, so I know I still have a horizontal tangent line, slope of 0. right? But therefore my graph is concave down, so it's opening down, which therefore means I have a max. Okay, so those are the last little finishing up ideas there. Just kind of put a bow on the first derivative number line and the second derivative value test. You did both of them in the other videos, but this is kind of just a way of succinctly uh, ending up that concept. All right, hope you enjoyed the videos. We'll see you in the next one.